Ladies and gentlemen, a new snapshot has been released for Minecraft 1.13. This is Minecraft Snapshot 17W45B for the Java Edition. The changes in this version are entirely related to commands. A lot of bug fixes for the new command functionality introduced in Wednesday's snapshot. However, it also contains two very significant changes to commands that enable a whole lot of new fancy tricks in Minecraft command contraptions. My name is Sliced Lime, let me guide you through these changes. Let's start with a merged command. The entity data and block data commands have disappeared and have been replaced with a slash data command. That has three different modes as it is right now, slash data merge and then block or entity to get the exact behavior that entity data and block data had before. So slash data merge block and then the block coordinates or slash data merge entity and then an entity selector. There's also a new function called slash data remove and then block or entity again and that is followed by a path and that is a path to the nbt value to remove. The path looks like this. It will have a name followed by a dot to access a field and a name followed by a square bracket and then a number to access an index in a list. You could also quote any name to use characters that would otherwise not be supported. If you've used any kind of programming language and if you're used to JSON notation then this should come quite natural. The final mode of slash data is slash data get. You can use it alone with just slash data get block or entity and then a specifier for which block or entity target and then it will print the full data for that target. But you could also use it with a path and an optional scale value. What that does is it will get the numeric value at that location at that path and then it will scale it by the scale factor that you've given and return the result as the result of the command. Now that might seem weird to you but it is very very significant because what that means is that you can take any nbt value of a numeric type and then you can use the slash execute store mode to store that value into a scoreboard. Now this is a function I first suggested two years ago and I've been discussing this extensively with Dinnerbone lately and we have come up with this syntax to enable this functionality in his new command parser. Now, if you can read values out of any NBT value onto a scoreboard, then can you do the opposite? The answer is yes, you can. You can read values out of a scoreboard with a command that was introduced in Wednesday's snapshot called slash scoreboard players get, and then you can store it back with a reworked version of the slash execute store command. Slash execute store used to just take result or success and then an entity and a scoreboard objective. It now takes an extra argument that says score, block or entity. And if you give that score it will act like before storing the value into a scoreboard objective. If you give it block or entity it will instead store the value onto an NBT field of that block or entity. Now if you do execute store with a block then the syntax is x, y and z path to the value you want to store then the type of that value so that is one of the numeric types byte short int long double or float and then a scale value that means that you can scale something from an nbt value into scoreboard do some operations on it and then scale it back when you write it back to nbt and the value is stored inside of the block at x y and z into the nbt tag at the path after multiplying by that scale if you do execute store with an entity, then the syntax is very similar, but instead of x, y, and z, you have a target selector. Other things have changed with execute as well. There are new modes that you can use slash execute if that will return the value instead of checking for the value and then continuing if you don't chain another command into it. That means that you can get the number of entities for something just like slash test for did in previous versions. There are also a bunch of fixes to slash execute, perhaps most importantly that it wouldn't work inside of functions and that unless, the unless mode was always failing if you used it on entities. If you used slash execute with multiple entities and one of the command invocations failed, then the command would also cancel the entire execute and that has been fixed in this version. And finally, when it comes to execute, the order for which execute runs the command for each entity was being done in reverse. Selectors have been fixed a little bit in this version as well. You were unable to use a namespace in type equals for selectors 
and if you use the at s selector then it would fail to build a valid command. If you used at a, at p or at e with a type equals player and then used a distance argument then you would be unable to find players. And at a and at s would not include dead players, that has also been fixed. A couple of fixes for the scoreboard commands, the minus equals operator was not a valid operation for scoreboard player's operation commands that has been fixed in this version, together with a bug that meant that trying to remove scoreboard points would instead add the scoreboard points. A couple of fixes for teleport, slash teleport with rotation values didn't work properly, and trying to teleport some entity that wasn't a player with relative coordinates would fail. Some other fixes as well, command function loading is much faster in this version, and optional commands following conditional executes chains would succeed or fail strangely. Some creative commands were available to players in survival mode even if cheats were disabled, and game rules can copy over from other worlds that are also fixed in this version. And finally, Telraw only supported one target. In this version, it will now support several targets again. In addition to that, a number of incorrect error messages and tab completion problems have been fixed in this version. And that was all for this time. If you want to try this version out, remember it is a snapshot and still highly experimental, can crash the game or even corrupt your world, so test it on a test world or on a backup of your world if you want to do so. Now, to start this version, head into your Minecraft launcher, hit the Launch Options tab and enable snapshots in there. You'll get a warning to click OK on and then head back to the News tab. Now in your launch drop-down box, you will be able to select a new profile called the Latest Snapshot. Start with that one and you will start the game with the latest snapshot, which is currently this one, 17W45B. My name is Slime. thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.